Welcome back to Gavin's channel. And this is, uh, well, we're dying in the light here. The light is dying. It's 8 o'clock, as you can see. Mr. Helson says it is, too. Hello, Mr. Helson. But this is a video. It's a rehash. We've seen both of these twerps. Let's just slap up a long twat. What an idiot. Let's open him up on camera. There we go. So we've got two doxers, and this is a, what, a, a video for anyone who might be considering doxer. You know, there's only two doxers, in, in my opinion, that are worth buying. And these are them. You've got your sub 200, your sub 600, you've got your 4000 T, you've got all these other doxers. But, it, you know, in my opinion, which is not valued by anyone in particular, the sub 300 T and the sub 1500 T are the, really the only two worth considering. Sub 300 also, if you like a bubble glass with a minimally visible dial, but these two are freaky as fuck. They are for the beach, in the face, and all my other cliches that I spit. So what can I say? I mean, this is purely for those of you who might be thinking about these watches, uh, both of which are almost identical. And what's the difference between them? And why should you buy this one over this one or this one over this one? Well, I don't know. I couldn't decide. So I ended up with both. And I love them both. The 300T is the smaller of the two. And he is quite a marvel. Uh, this is, an, you know, the classic Doxa watch. The 300 Sub 300, Sub 300 T. This is in the professional dial variant. And of course, my lovely Rambler, as you can see, the C Rambler, this is the silver dial variant. Doxa has a strange way of designating their dial colors. They're known for their funky dials, all kinds of colors. Uh, and I will list them off. So you have this one, which is the professional. Professional is the Classic orange, the last colour apparently to disappear underwater. Then you have the Shark Hunter, which comes in a black dial, and all these will be written on the dial under its model designation. Then you get the Sea Rambler, which is a sort of silvery off white colour. This is the, after this colour, this is the second most popular colour doxa cells I, I read. Then you get the Caribbean which I is blue and I wanted that and I didn't know which one to go for. I ended up with this but I could have easily swapped this out for the blue. They're both for the beach. So freaky. And then from there on the colours become something more of a uh, they're more for the extrovert because you get the diving star which comes in a bright yellow colour. Uh, you have to have some sort of charisma to pull that one off. And then you get the Aquamarine, Marine, which, you know, the name is quite evident. It's a turquoise dial. It's not for me, but I respect him. And then, of course, the latest iteration uh, dial the Doxa do is the White Pearl, which is a stark white dial. And I've handled that, and it's a funny one, because it looks great on this 300 dial, which is smaller. But on a, on a 1500 dial, that white, it's just too much. It looks, it's just wrong. And that's why you can find that white pearl 1500 massively discounted now, because I don't think anyone wanted to buy it. Big mistake there from the Doxa family. But the, fifth, the 300T is really a great piece it's a it's not a small watch but compared to the 1500 it is it features the unmistakable doxa case and the case specs are it's a 42.5 millimeter case so it's not that small but it's certainly not a big watch let's just take the helson off look at that look at that and let's take him off Put him down over there. What's up, bros? What's up, Mad Rob? Just had a conversation. Mad Rob watches an adventure. Just hit 1K subs. Maximum respect. 
Jamie fully tag in Labrador. Absolutely fucked up. So here is the 300T on my spaghetti. This is a 7.5 inch wrist last time I measured it. My weight does fluctuate. But this has a 42.5 millimeter case. It's a 44.5 millimeter lug to lug. So it's, it's very small in lug to lug length. So it's like a turtle from Seiko if you've ever handled one of them. It's a quite a large watch, but you can, it's a very short lug to lug. Wingspan is tiny. We can wear it down to seven inch wrists and possibly even below, but not much below. Uh, the height of this watch is 13.6, so it's getting, getting up to nearly to 14. Uh, and this is a 1200 meter water resistant dive watch of the likes of Jacques Cousteau and the US Navy and all kinds of people. This is a hardcore brand that, you know, when they were first introduced, this was what, this was a true diver, as you can see by this rather nice decompression table featured on the inner bezel. That's another thing. The docks are polished out of bezel in feet. Sorry, the, uh, the decompression table's on the outer bezel. And then you have the count up timer on the inner bezel. The orange pip is loomed. I mean, you've got a helium escape valve. It's all polished. Concentric brushing. Insane. Uh, I think it's a 19 or is it a 20? I don't know. 20 millimeter lug here, but it flares out about 25 on this exceptional bracelet. And this is what Docs is known for. This beads of rice style bracelet. It is absolutely proper. Look at that. Look at him. Every bead is polished up. The flanks are high polish. We have screws. And this is the clasp. This is Dox's best clasp. This clasp is only featured on the 300 and the 1500. The 200 and the 600T do not get this, which is an on the fly ratchet. Everyone's doing them nowadays. I mean, this was kind of stolen from Citizen. Uh, but this is very nice to behold. And this is the Jenny family logo, the Jenny family purchase doxa. Jenny watches were also a thing. It's a kind of mishmash between two brands. And as I've said before, the doxa purists will not like this. Beautifully painted on. This crown is shrouded and protected with an ETA 2824 movement in here, uh, which has a 38 hour power reserve, 26 joules. And that's very nice. So that's the 300T professional. We've got these blocky hands, the massive minute hand, which is the most important hand for diving, of course, which we all do. And how does he compare to the Sub 1500T for the beach. Well, this watch is like a anabolic steroids infested peptides and GH growth hormone version of this one. Uh, and let me just show you them both side by side. The 1500T is a scaled up version of the 300 for those of us with bigger wrists or just for people that like massive twerps. I happen to like huge twerps between the sizes of 43 and 45. I don't go much beyond that. I'm not some kind of Invicta cockboy who likes 50 millimeter cocks, but this 44, 45 millimeter is perfect for me. So I'll put him on my wrist. And this is, I hope this can help some of you because it's, it is a tough decision. It does look big. Uh, and if you don't like a large watch, this one really is. You know you're wearing it. This 
300 is quite unobtrusive. It's not that heavy. I don't know the weight exactly. This one is over 220 grams. I would speculate that this one is around ooh, 180, something like that, 190. Still quite heavy with its paltry 1200 meter water resistance. But this beautiful 1500 Sea Rambler, as you can see, it's almost exactly the same, but this time it comes with 160 bar or 1500 meters of water resistance. Exactly the same beautiful bezel. Doxa bezels are well known and you get this time uh, an orange massive minute hand. The, the paint on these hands is very thick. <coughs> it looks beautiful. The blocky stop seconds it extends all the way into the track. Uh, but this time you will get a domed sapphire crystal that offers all kinds of distortions. Same sawtooth style bezel, but look how much thicker it is here. It's a thicker affair. And where you don't get any uh, pierced lugs here, this time you get screwed lugs and a 21 millimeter strap, which is completely inconvenient. But the bracelet here is so wonderful, you probably won't ever want to take it off. It's a shame the 1200T, which is an, ex, an old watch that's no longer made by Doxa, came with the beads of rice for the beach, and it was in the face. But this 1500 has been upgraded or downgraded, you would think, to this similar composition a five link bracelet. <coughs> this one has the first, third, and fifth links in satin, satinized. The flanks are high polish as usual. We've got screwed links, and you have high polish second and fourth links. Uh, a strange size, but just look at that. I mean, it's something else, isn't it? Uh, helium escape again. This one is massively large. This has an ETA 2892. So this is a slightly better, more upmarket movement than this one. But, you know, in reality, there's not a lot of difference. I The winding is much smoother on this than on this one. This one is quite grindy. This one you feel nothing. But um, both absolutely beautiful watches. This one does keep slightly better time. But they're both within COSC. They're not COSC certified. If you want a COSC certified Doxa, Doxa, you will need to buy the Sub 300, not the T. The Sub 300 is chronometer certified. But both of these are running better than plus five. Neither of them are minus. This one's about plus two. Maybe this one, I'm not sure exactly. It's, it's plus three, plus four. They're both absolutely accurate uh, in the time that I've had them. Uh, so, yeah, the lovely slotted uh, and knurled crown, absolutely great crown, but the thickness here is comparable. Look at the thickness. Sorry about my phone. It's a different league of thickness. Look at that. This is 16.6, I think, compared to the 13.6 of, of the sub. So this is a consideration you must take. This is a very heavy, large, heavy watch. And if you wear it for more than about half an hour, uh, some people will probably want to take it off. I mean, it is pulling your arm down, whereas the 300T is quite comfortable and unobtrusive. This is a massive freak, and they're not for everybody, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just happen to love these large watches. This one has a 50-hour power reserve, 2892. It's a... Uh, 28.8 thousand VPH, same as the 2824, it's a 25 joule, the 2824 is a 26 joule, irrelevant. Uh, the case is 45 millimeters, the, the lug to lug is 47 compared to the lug to lug here, which was 44.5, but even 47 is actually very uh, acceptable, and you can wear these. I mean, they're, apart from the massive weight, and width. The lug-to-lug -lug is small. 
I mean, you can you can actually you could fit this on a seven inch wrist. Uh, it's 160 atmospheres, 1,500 meters of water resistant, and it has these strange 21 millimeter lugs, which you won't want to change out because look at these screws, and they're a fucking pain in the ass. I mean, even changing links on these is a cunt because. The links are screwed on both sides. It's not like a Helson where you have this lovely hex, uh, these screws here, but and these hexagons here. This is much more difficult to do. You need professional screwdrivers, and a lot of people complain they just can't do it by themselves. So make sure you get it sized properly in the jeweler. The clasp is the same here. It's very nice fully milled swing arm and even the shell of the uh, outer clasp is milled there's no there's no uh, Seiko-esque uh, pressed metal even on the upper so that's nice case backs look at the fucking state bros sub 1500 T Swiss made this is the patented bezel, helium valve, and the lovely relief of the Jennyfish logo. Of course, the Doxa logo is a ship. I don't know why they've done it, but they've got this Jenny family logo all over their twerps nowadays. So, I'll, do, I'll try to do a two-wrist comparison. And as I said, this is just for people who are considering these two. There's probably about five people in the world who don't know which one they want to get. But if it helps anyone, I'm happy. So that's the Sub 300T. Manageable, sensible, comfortable, beautiful, absolutely for the beach and in the face. Look at that. This is a normal watch. 1200 meters of water resistance. Splash your gonads in the brine with wanton abandon. This watch will not be destroyed. But if you like something a bit bigger, heavier, and more retarded than the 1500T, this one has a flat crystal, this one has a domed crystal. You know, which one, which one is for you guys? I just couldn't choose. I ended up with both. And I wear them both. And if they made one that was even bigger than these, I'd probably buy that as well. Like the 5000T. If you guys ever seen that, that was fucked up. But yes, the bracelets, absolutely proper. And of course, if you can't buy them, you could buy this, which out-angles them both in terms of loom. But that's it for Mr. Geffers. I'm afraid I am completely out of twerps and content. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I've got 990 subs. I just wanted to reach 1,000 before I quit. But we've run out of ideas. I've got no money, no watches, and nothing else to review. So let me know what you think I should do. Because I'm completely fucked up. In the meantime, bros, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Stay freaky. Never give up. And remember that everything I've done is for the beach.